Donald Trump is again testing the power of his endorsement. With an early morning social media post on Friday, Trump inserted himself into the chaotic race to replace Kevin M.C. Carthy as House Speaker by backing Ohio rep Jim Jordan for the post. The move was the latest example of Trump attempting to flex his influence within a Republican Party he has already fundamentally reshaped in the eight years since his first White House bid. With Trump's firm grip on the GOP base, his endorsement can effectively clear the field in many congressional primaries. But the speaker's race is more complex, an intra-party fight that will play out in secret at points and in a tense environment with many Republicans furious about M MC Carthy's ousted. Jordan is facing at least one other candidate. House Majority Leader Steve Scalise, who is also on good terms with Trump. Boris Johnson has today denounced Rishi Sunak's bummy smoking ban, which he says will distract police from attending crimes. In his latest Daily Mail column, the former Prime Minister rails against increasing the size of, of the state concluding let's stop telling people what to do it is the second flagship government policy which the ex-premier has criticized after he made plain his folly at the scalping of the northern leg of, of HS2. In his conference speech this week, Mr. Sunak announced plans for those aged 14 or younger to be banned from ever legally buying cigarettes, leading to the eventual eradication of the habit. Criticizing the proposed ban, Mr. Johnson urges that enforcing it will distract officers from fighting real crimes such as burglary. The ruling Hamas militant group in the Gaza Strip carried out an unprecedented attack on, on Israel at daybreak Saturday, firing thousands of rockets as dozens of fighters infiltrated the heavily fortified border in several locations by air, land and sea, catching the country off guard on a major holiday. Is Several hours after the invasion began, Hamas militants were still fighting gun battles inside several Israel communities in a surprising show of strength that shook the country. Israel's National Rescue Service said at least 22 people have been killed and hundreds wounded, making it the deadliest attack in Israel in years. The Soloka Medical Center in the southern Israel city of Beshaba said it was treating at least 280 casualties, with 60 in serious conditions. There was no official comment on casualties in Gaza, but Associated Press reporters witnessed the funerals of 15 people who were killed and saw another 80 bodies arrived arrive at a local hospital, it was not immediately clear if they were fighters or civilians. Six Colombians arrested as the alleged assassins of a candidate in Ecuador's August presidential election was slain Friday inside a prison in Guayaquil, officials announced, without providing details on what happened. The prison authority said only that six prisoners killed inside Ritoro Penitentiary were the men charged with the murder of former presidential candidate Fernando Villavincencio. It identified them as Grigol R, Andres Manuel M, Ade Fernando, and so many others. Earlier, the agency had reported that an event occurred inside the prison and six people were dead. Detroit is Ecuador's biggest prison and is considered one of its most dangerous, being the scene of several riots with death the past three years.
A delegation of U.S. lawmakers led by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Chuck arrived in China on Saturday in the first congressional visit to the country since 2019. The trip comes amid a sharp deterioration in relations between the two countries and as Chinese and American officials try to lay the groundwork for a possible meeting between President Joe Biden and Xi Jinping in November. The delegation of six senators, which includes three Democrats and three Republicans, landed in Shanghai on a U.S. government jet on an overcast and windy afternoon. The Republicans were led by Idaho Sen Mike Kraft. The senator, the senior member of his party on the Senate Finance Committee, asked about his expectations for the visit. Chuck, New York co Democrat, said he hoped it would be productive. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.